and we live in a world driven by geopolitical tensions the go the cool comfort of a bipolar world where india could play the us off against the soviet union and risk concessions that climate is gone we matter because we are the largest non chinese power in the this region so the us <laughs> is moving us regardless of what they think of the man who leads this country and this politics the us continues to move us and you know this goes back to when george bush gave india a nuclear deal and we became part of the quasi and membership of the nuclear supplies group and left the isolation of technology denial we had faced till then are we making good use of this favorable environment this is a question we must address when you say you are the third largest or fifth largest or we are soon going to be the third largest economy are we in a position to say that we are using the world's resources to develop a nation we are a young country the developed world is old and the old world has said to ensure their retired life pension funds pension savings through insurance huge amounts of money is at disposal on which they want huge returns for those returns they have no alternative but to come to a country like india to generate profits and take a share back with them so india is actually in a position where it can reap the benefits of the world's need for high income and absorb large amounts of investment but are we they will claim that they have you know increased the amount of fdi coming into this country but fdi is actually uh, accumulating as foreign exchange reserves money comes in but we are unable to absorb it in the real economy and the unabsorbed money accumulates as foreign exchange reserves now i mean this needs to change right all transparency digital payments we have climate of corruption we have demonetized corruption out of the system in 2023 the transparent transparency international uh corruption perception in on that india fell eight points we were uh we were 85th in 2022 in 2023 we became 93rd so our corruption levels are actually not going down they are going up if this country is perceived to be corrupt what does it mean if somebody puts his money in india will that actually be used to generate returns for which they are investing in this country if the returns are generated will be properly reported in your income statements if it is reported will you actually kick it back to the investor on all this on corporate governance and reporting standards and the ability to generate actual income and get return it there is doubt so that is something obstacle which prevents a country like india from absorbing as much of foreign direct investment as is potentially available and is being offered to you only for the you could use now what all do we need to check uh, one or two things uh, from what our net said when uh, You know, U.S. or somebody looks at India. The World Bank looks at India. The IMF looks at India. Or uh, you know, what are those rating agencies uh, when they look at India? What do they look at? Do they look at 1.4 billion? They don't. They look at about uh, 330 million. Because that's the market. You you produce a fridge, they buy. It. Car, they buy. It. You know, uh, SUVs they buy it, luxury watches they buy it, uh, all the white goods they buy. It. That's the market. The rest is not a market. So when they say India is the happening place, they look at 330 million. This is one. The second thing is, you know, when. why what happens when when somebody wants to invest in india they would like to look at the skill set 
do we have this? I told you about the youth unemployment. We have, a, it's, it's true, as Arun pointed out, we have a, a huge uh, young population, unlike the, the older economies, unlike the developed economies, starting from Japan to you know, and we will we will have this demographic dividend or the advantage maybe for another 10 15 years that's it after that it will vanish it's actually vanishing slowly and slowly but we have not been able to leverage that because we do not invest in skills in spite of whatever the government has been telling us like skill india Startup India, Kelo India, that India, this India, and all that. We have not been investing in any of the uh, you know programs that really make our young population skillful. Since Arun is also situating India in terms of the global context, Arun, you are aware that you know the the skill skilling. Worker skilling, if you look at in Japan, I think it's about 90%. 90% of the workforce and the potential workforce is trained. And South Korea is again very high, 85 or 86%. The lowest in any of the successful economies is somewhere around 70, 65 to 70 when it comes to United Kingdom and France and other you can see. Now, situate India in that. India skilling is 5%. Gone are the days when you get into a college and come out of the college, get into a job and retire. No. Oh. You, you get into a college, acquire skills, you get into a job every four years, five years, you retrain yourself. So before, between your joining of a job and leaving your job, at least seven to eight times you are trained and retrained and trained and retrained. That's the that's the modern economy. Our days are gone where you you know very happily we get into a job and we retire. Oh, the youngsters they have to go on. They have to be on their toes. That is the reality of the world economy. And today in that we are way behind. And we are not making an effort. And you know, not only that, most of our youngsters are unemployed, but unhappily, most of them are unemployable. That is why you have 